podcast, inspiring and empowering Christians of all measures of faith to simply believe God and follow Jesus. Join in with our host, Bible teacher and guide, Dr. Philip Zimmerman, as he explores the paths through Scripture that lead to life in the will of God, being joyful always, praying continually, and being thankful in all circumstances, simply by believing God and following Jesus. And now, Dr. Z. Welcome again. This is Dr. Philip Zimmerman, Dr. Z. And you've joined me for episode number 023 of Way of the Bible podcast. So glad to have you with me today. You know, there comes times in your life when things happen and you pray and prayers are answered and it goes above and beyond your imagination. The things that God has in store for those who love him. And and this is the story of this podcast uh, guest speaker we have on today. I won't go into the whole story, but uh, our guest, Marcus Jackson, and I were introduced, I, I would say, by the Spirit of God. As I was considering on who to have on the show after our short uh, series on the Genesis creation narrative, Marcus and I were introduced. And I had a conversation with Marcus, and, and it was just, he, he was, oh my gosh, as you will hear in this interview, he is the one exactly to follow up this this short series. And, and I say that in regards to one of the things I had emphasized on our last episode as we covered Genesis chapter 3 was that through sin and death, we were held in slavery by our fear of death to Satan, and, and, and he held us captive in order to do his will. And I just want to encourage you, as I have been encouraged through this uh, conversation that you're about to, about to hear, that our freedom in Christ is unbelievable what God has given us. The free will to follow God, the free will to simply believe God and follow Jesus. The first part of the interview I'm discussing with Marcus is basically his testimony, and his testimony is unbelievably, and it is beautiful. It is a, it's a beautiful testimony. And then that's followed up by a conversation with Marcus and his mother, Madeline, as they discuss their book, Christians, God Says You Are a Priest. I encourage you to listen to the whole thing because as I've listened to it again— there is so much richness in that entire interview. You, you don't want to miss any of it. I encourage you to uh, listen to their to, to what they were saying about their book. And as if if you were as I w- was inclined to to go right to Amazon and buy their book, I encourage you to do that. In fact, I've got it in my hands right now. Enjoy the podcast. Be blessed in what you hear. As God's desire for all of us is to truly live every day. Simply believing God and following Jesus. Now to the interview. I've got Marcus Jackson with me on the phone today. Uh, Marcus, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm blessed, brother. How are you, Dr. Z? I am doing fantastic. I'm doing so fantastic. So glad to get to have you on the podcast today and and interview you in, in, in regards to uh, simply believing God and following Jesus. Amen. I, now that's what we're here to do today. Uh in what we're going to use as our, our guiding, uh, I guess, thought is a quote by A.W. Tozer. And he, he's quoted as saying, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Amen. So, so as we get to that, uh, we'll get to some, some questions and, and, and kind of pick your brain about this. Can you catch us up on who Marcus Jackson is today and what you find that occupies most of your time? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, who Marcus Jackson is today is a follower of Jesus Christ, and I have uh, surrendered my life to Jesus for him to be Lord of my life. So that's who I am today. Every day, Dr. Z, I awake grateful for another opportunity for Jesus to live his agenda, his purpose his mission in my life um, throughout the day. So that's who I am today. That's fantastic. And tell us a little bit about, about, about your coaching practice and your and your all these other things you have going on. <laughs> well, you know, the blessing is um, when we give our lives to Christ, as you know, and we're led by him, then he starts to manifest within our lives the original intent and purpose that he desires for us. So in having given my life to Christ many years ago, 
um, you know, I've just been prayerful. Jesus, what do you have for me to do? What is the work that you have for me to do? What is the business that you have for me to do? What is the position in life? And so over the course of the years, you know, the Holy Spirit directed me into entrepreneurship. And that just happens to be a position that is heavily rooted or deeply rooted in my bloodline. My dad was an entrepreneur. My grandfather was an entrepreneur. So I didn't know if God wanted me to be an entrepreneur or not, but through prayerful uh, seeking of Christ, that's what God had intended for me as well. And so that led me into a business that I currently own and operate called Caliber Enterprises. And we handle just a variety of things, everything from branding to business coaching, business consulting, also being a talent agent of all things. So it's really been anyone that ever says following Jesus is boring. They don't know the Jesus that I know (laughs) because I never expected in a million years to have been led by Jesus on the path, doing what he has me doing on a day-to-day basis. And it's just, it's just marvelous, Dr. Z. It really is to see the Holy Spirit move in my life on a day-to-day basis in all of these areas. That's fantastic. A surrendered life. That's what we're, what we are uh, supposed to be living as believers. Uh, Let me get to this first real question in regards to the topic. How long have you been a Christian? And and how would you define your conversion experience, which may be two different, you know, two different uh, events or two different times? That, that's a great question, Dr. Z. I have a beautiful testimony and of how Christ brought me to himself, and that is using my parents. My parents, they would take me to church. And at the time, we were going to a Lutheran church in the Washington, D.C. area. And I was about eight years old. And at the age of 10, my pastor at the church was led by the Lord to approach my parents and ask them if they, if he could have their permission to lead me to Christ, to literally teach me about who Jesus was and is, and to walk me through the scriptures to salvation. And my parents said yes. And next thing I know, I was coming to church about an hour earlier than the actual service. And I was uh, spending time with the pastor one-on-one at the church in the scripture. And he was teaching me about Jesus. And so, you know, going through that program with him led me to Jesus. And Dr. Z, I tell you, when he taught me about who Jesus was in the scriptures and who he is in the scriptures, I knew in my heart, I knew undeniably that I wanted to be with Jesus. And so I accepted him into my my heart. I confessed him for him to be Lord of my life. And I was age 10 at that, at that time. And then I proceeded to become an acolyte with the church and do a bunch of different things. Now, you know, with your question, the the twofold aspect of your question, it wasn't until years later, until I was probably, I think I was 21, actually, I was 21, that I realized that my confession of Christ and my desire to be with Christ and to be a Christian was underserving, if you will, because I didn't realize uh, at the time with my pastor that I needed to be reading the word <laughs> on a daily basis. And that's nothing negative towards him. He, he carried me through the scriptures to, to know Jesus. But I was under the impression that walking with Jesus was a office of the ministry's job, if you will. And their job was to teach the rest of us about Jesus. But I didn't realize that I too am called to seek Jesus in the scriptures, to to learn of him so that I can be like him. I thought that was the pastor's job. And I thought that I was, you know, blessed to go to heaven because I accepted Jesus, but that my job was to go to church on Sunday and to support the pastor by being an acolyte. (laughs) So I didn't know that God had a much broader and wide plan 
for followers of Jesus. And so when I was 21, the Holy Spirit flew in. And once again, he used my parents because basically they had come into the knowledge through the preaching of the gospel from a minister who was on TV, the importance of studying the scriptures to walk with Jesus. And so I had come home from uh, college one day uh, visiting, you know, for the holiday. And my parents said to me, we're going to read the scripture tonight. <laughs> and I was like, what? Why? We do that at church. We don't need to do that at the house. <laughs> and when I look back now, I was so naive. It, it, it sounds it sounds so foreign, so ridiculous, and really so sad that that was my understanding of the relationship God intended for me to have with Jesus. I thought it was just Sunday. I thought it was just reading the scripture that the, the church told me to read on Sunday. I didn't really understand that Jesus had a desire for me to follow him and walk with him every day. <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, that, that, that's beautiful. So let, let's go to this uh, uh, phrase on A.W. Tozer, what comes to mind, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So when you think about the phrase, believe God, what comes to your mind is, let's say, the top three things that we should believe about God. Well, when I think about the phrase, believe God, I think about, for one, I, th I think about Abraham, you know, and this is having read the scripture. I think about Romans 4, 1 through 3, that basically, you know, God declared Abraham to be righteous. And it's something that God said that Abraham was. And, you know, what I understand from that is, is that when God says something, it's so. And it's so important for us to understand what God is saying so that we can believe what he's saying, because it's going to be so whether we're on board in belief or not, just simply because he said it. So it's just very important for and, and, you know, I know we're going to get to the book later, Dr. Z, but I just got to share this one thing that's actually on page one. And it says, because, you know, in light of this question, we wrote in the book, whether one believes the Holy Bible or not, God's word does not return void, but accomplishes all that he purposed. Isaiah 55, 8 through 11 Matthew 5, 17 through 18. So with that said, in answer to your question, Dr. Z, the word is residing over all creation. God's spoken word, God himself as the authority of his creation is residing over all of us. So it's most important for us to benefit from that word residing over us in believing that it is so. And in believing what God has said so that we are in oneness with what God has said and spoken over our lives and not in denial or deception or have a need for God to prove to us that what he said is actually real in terms of needing to be corrected to believe. <laughs> That, 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 that's beautiful. I, I think that the use of scripture again, I mean, it just it shows the it shows the importance of scripture in a believer's life. And I think that's that's what you indicated it really in your testimony earlier that you know the pastor led you to the Lord using the scriptures, but then you just thought you got the scriptures at church, and it wasn't until you encountered your parents and realized, oh my gosh, there there is so much more here. And then as you get into the scriptures for yourself, not because you have to go to church or because of, but now you're going in for exactly. Yourself. And then start believing what God is saying, <laughs> because he's, right. he, he is saying something exactly like you said, his, his will will be done. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Yeah. And, and we're, we're the ones missing out if we're not on board, because it's happening and it's happening right before our eyes. But because we don't understand him 
and what he has already spoken and what he is currently speaking on a day-to-day basis through the power of his Holy Spirit, we're just, we're missing a whole level of existence, a whole level of living. And the most important thing is we're missing God's intent for us to actually commune with him in a personal conscious relationship at walking with him, as opposed to things just happening to us and us not necessarily understanding why, and us not necessarily having the opportunity to give God the response that he's looking for, because we, we're not communing in his love with him. We're, we're doing life separately from him when we don't believe what he says and when we don't know what he has spoken. That's perfect. Uh, that leads us to you know, the next question, which would be, when you think of the phrase, follow Jesus, what comes to your mind? Well, you know, when I think of the phrase, follow Jesus, I, I think of love. And again, I have to go to a scripture, Hebrews seven twenty eight. The law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. So Jesus is perfect. Jesus is God. God loved us so much to send perfect Jesus for us to follow him, to learn how God wants to live with us. And Jesus is our example. So that being a follower of love, being a follower of God's supernatural love beyond imagination is just, it's overwhelming. It's exciting. It's, it's exhilarating. That's how I came to know Jesus. When my pastor shared with me how much God loved us through Jesus's sacrifice to suffer, to come into the world and enter into this fractured relationship between us and God and to heal and restore it on our behalf. I mean, you, you, you have to be just hard, cold, unloving to not see how much God loved us by sending Jesus. So who wouldn't want to follow that kind of love? And then the part two of that, uh, Dr. Z, is in when we wrote this book, my understanding of that love deepened in terms of um, the more we follow Jesus, the greater we understand the magnitude of the love God gave us through his sacrifice, because we see how selfless Jesus is. We see how how he was willing to take on this suffering that is beyond comprehension from God to restore someone else's relationship. I, I mean, that just looking at that vision of Jesus, following him, makes us understand how imperfect we are, how frail we are, how selfish we are, and why following him is so important. Because that's the only way we can become loving like him, selfless like him. And specifically, that's the only way our relationship can be restored with our creator. So to follow Jesus, Dr. Z, that's where it's at. There's no one or anything else that we will do in this life that will be more important than following God's love in Christ Jesus. That is, that is, that is beautiful. I, I, and, and when you were when you were talking, I had to pull out my Bible app and, and look up uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, make sure I got it right. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my, Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Amen. That idea of learning from Jesus. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. All right. Now, I, 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 you know, the, just hearing you, you speak and we'd spoken earlier on the phone and your love for, for uh, Jesus is evident about in every, everything that you're doing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you actually include stuff on your website and, and on your LinkedIn page, faith-based nature. And I know that you, 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 you're, you're an entrepreneur and you're out there in the, in the world doing business. And so my, my question to you as a believer what do you get any pushback from any secular clients or, or other people who, who who visit your materials, who see your materials and see this un, unabashedly unashamed proclamation of Jesus and of faith in God? It, it, has that had been a hindrance in, in your business or, or, or a benefit? You know, that is a I love questions like that. Thank you for asking me that (laughs) because that's one of the reasons we're called to follow Jesus, to be a light unto the world. Jesus tells us to go ye into the world and preach the gospel. That is his charge to all of his followers. So, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. (laughs) And like him, it's not going to be received by everyone. Jesus was not received, and today he's not received by everyone. And here's the beauty of it. That's okay. And why is that okay? Because God is sovereign. He already knows who are his, and he is drawing them to himself on a daily basis. So I say all that to say that when we understand that God already knows who are his and that he's already purposed for them to be home with him through Christ, I have to fulfill the mission call of the one that I follow. And so I'm not concerned about how it's received. I'm concerned about pleasing the one I follow. Now, when the one I follow reveals that what I'm doing is a blessing in line with accomplishing his mission and bringing people to Christ because they see the gospel or they see a message or they see my heart for Jesus, you know, on social media or on the website or whatever. Well, then like the scripture says, you know, when one person repents and turns to God, heaven is rejoicing. I I'm so encouraged. And it, it, it's great to get that testimony that I'm on the right track, that had I not shared my relationship with Christ, this person may have had to walk a longer period of time before they were birthed into the kingdom through receipt of Jesus. So in answer to your question, I don't get a lot of pushback because I'm unconditional in my intent to serve Christ, not to hate anyone, not to force anyone to believe what I believe, because I know I can't. I can't force them. It has to be by the Spirit of God. What I'm called to do is to let Jesus's light resonate, to let my relationship with him resonate and illuminate the world. So I sow it out there for Jesus to be ahead of me and then how the Holy Spirit utilizes it to accomplish Jesus's mission that uh, when we go back to what believing what God, who he is and what he says, well, he's already said that, you know, this world will end and that there will be believers and there won't be believers. And so Jesus said, get to work, get to work followers, because there's a certain amount of time that all of your brothers and sisters have to come into the kingdom before this is over. So part of the work of doing everyday work is to make sure that the world gets to see Jesus. So now the people, the unbelievers, who don't know Jesus and they come across uh, the word on the website or they come across uh, messages on social media or they come across my faith in speaking to me. I can't say that I've received 
a whole lot of pushback. Um, what I can say is either there's a response, a receptiveness to it, or there isn't. And that's just, it's usually clear because everyone is entitled to choose to believe what they want to believe. I've made the choice, thank the Lord, by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to choose to believe God and what he has said about Jesus and to receive Jesus. There are a lot of people that I work with, clients, people that I know who have not made that choice. But that's where the love that I'm following kicks in. Jesus, as God's representative, he loves all of his creation, even if they're not in the kingdom or they will never be in the kingdom. He still loves them. So, you know, I've had interactions with unbelievers that it may not have been as pleasant as I would have liked it to be, but it was never truly about Jesus or my faith. It was usually, or let me say this. This is what I'll say, Dr. Z. When we live our faith, it will either attract or dispel a heart. It just will. Yeah. Because either that heart is receptive to God's love or it isn't at this time, you know, and maybe later. So when I live my faith, either it repels people right away because they don't want to be around the light and praise God for that, Dr. Z, (laughs) because if they don't want to be around the light, trust and believe. I do not want to be around them unless God is telling me I have to for his divine purposes. So in a sense, uh, I know this is a long uh, roundabout way to answer your question. But in a sense, that's one of the reasons why we have to go into all the world and preach the gospel, because preaching the gospel is our armor, right? It protects us and it keeps us from getting around spirits, people, whatever it is that has no desire to be involved with the light. And followers of Jesus don't want to be around darkness unless we have to for the spirit to wage war through the preaching of the gospel on God's behalf in alignment with God for his purposes of salvation. So I, I'm i just so honored and blessed to declare my relationship with Jesus. And I love declaring it with before unbelievers. I love it. Yeah. Because that's what we're supposed to do. And either the Holy Spirit takes that declaration and produces another offspring for God by birthing someone into the kingdom through salvation, or God reveals, uh, you need to stay away from that person because I don't have any work there. But at the same time, they heard the gospel nonetheless. So does that make sense? Well, yeah, well, was, <laughs> that was that was perfect. Uh, you know, uh, the reason for even starting this podcast on my on my on my part was to exactly communicate what you what you've just stated, which is that the, 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 not to cower away from the culture in regards to your faith in Jesus. Don't don't suddenly remain silent because the culture is telling you to you know be quiet and step to the back. It, you, we, we have the right, and, and in fact, we have the calling from God to declare our, our allegiance to Jesus Christ. And as you said, we're not to hide our, our light under a bushel or a bushel basket or something. It is supposed to shine brightly. So I, I, I commend you for that, and I'm just hopefully my, my listening audience is encouraged by that, and that they'll take that word that you've given them and uh, follow through with it in their own lives, in their own businesses, to not be ashamed of the gospel, not to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. He is he is perfect, and he saved your life forever. You know, what, what, we, we can we could never repay him for what he's done. Why, why, why never be ashamed of somebody who's done that for us? So that leads me into the, talking about your book. Uh, you and your mom got together, and, and I, it, it was a, I think you said over a thirty year period of, of this book coming to be. It's called Christians. God says you are priests, and that comes out of First Peter two nine. So. Uh, Marcus, can you tell us uh, about your book and, and what 
what brought it about and, and what's in it. I, 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 my understanding is there, there's a Bible study in it. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And, and uh, Dr. Z, thank you so much for this opportunity to share this amazing work that the Lord did using my mom and myself. And by the way, my mom is here. This is Madeline Jackson. How are you, Dr. Z? I'm <laughs> doing fantastic, Madeline. So glad to have you. And your, your son is, you, you, you did well, mom. You, you, you did well. God has worked through mightily through you. And, uh, and uh, your son Marcus is a, is a testimony to your, your you and your husband's faith. So. And I must confess that the Lord did it despite my husband and me. <laughs> <laughs> he is faithful. <laughs> and, and with all of that accolade, Doctor Z, you know I have to say that uh, had it not been for Jesus's body and blood, and still, if it weren't for Jesus's body and blood, I would definitely not be worthy. (laughs) But anyway, going to this book, um, you know, to the point of the last question that you had mentioned, being out here in the world, living in the world, living our testimony of Christ is so important. And the title, Christians, God Says You Are Priests, God's intent for all of Jesus's followers is to emulate, reflect, Jesus's light on a table and not be underneath the table. Scripture from Matthew. It's so important that we understand that we're not just receiving Jesus to live in heaven. That's not the full power and point of Jesus's sacrifice. We're receiving Jesus so that Jesus can then attract all of the other children, all of his other people back home to him using his spirit in us. And in order to do that, we have to be aligned with God and his holiness, which is what God's intent is for, you know, all of us, his children, to understand how to be priests in the character of our high priest, which is Jesus. So go ahead, Miss Jackson. I know you have, I've been talking a lot. So let me. <laughs> yes. First John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Even though I confessed the Lord at nine years old, I didn't know him. So I didn't know love. This book, The intent of our heart and the assignment from God was to give an overview of who God is based on what he purposed for humanity. The awesome, mighty, exceptional love he wanted to give humanity, despite the fact that we kept refusing it, despite the fact that humanity kept uh, going our own way rather than receiving all the love he was giving us. Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 talks about the love that God has given us that's exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we could ask or think. Paul prayed for us to know God's love that way. And the only way we can know God's love is to experience that intimate love with him in a relationship with him. So the whole purpose of the book is to give an overview of how God actually gave us that love and how he still continues to woo us to himself. I want to say that it is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You know, I I went to church pretty much all my life and it wasn't until I, I, and I, and I thought I had that. I thought, you know, I believed God, I believed in Jesus, but I didn't have a relationship with him. That makes all the difference in the world. (laughs) It does. That's what happened to me. I mean, I did that for 40 years. I was 40 years old. Well, my parents told me when I was a baby, but I was 40 years old before I had received an intimate relationship with God through Christ because I didn't know Jesus. Yeah. I had no knowledge of Jesus other than I was going to heaven because I confessed him. And I had no understanding that I was supposed to respond to that awesome love. I was supposed to show him how much I love him for him having done so much for me. Yeah. And in showing him how much we love him, we're willing 
to be perfected in the image of Christ, meaning we're willing for the Holy Spirit to transform us from within, to transform our will, to transform our character, to transform our purpose in life, our intentions in life, to transform all of those things into what God wants them to be. Because see, God gave his creation a free will, as we know. But because of the fall, our free will is tainted with self-will, with tainted with what we want to do apart from what God wants to do with us and in us. So this book was written to help us as followers of Jesus yearn and yield and surrender on a daily basis, Dr. Z, because like I said previously, I thought, it, you know, we just went to church for a couple of hours a week and that was enough. But God wants Christians, followers of Jesus, his intent is for us to yield to the Holy Spirit, the indwelling perfect God, transforming us into becoming more like the one we follow, who is God's high priest. So since Jesus is the high priest of God, Jesus's followers are many priests in Christ, okay, by the spirit of God, as we yield ourselves for God and Christ to do their intended work through each of us. That is, again, is this it is exactly what the scriptures are saying. I mean, from from what we what for a believer, and again, you just you know you, you have people in the church that are that that were like uh, Madeline, like yourself, and like Marcus, and like myself, who who don't have who are actively participating in a church and have faith in God and faith in Jesus, but don't have that relationship with them. And and I loved what you were saying, Marcus, earlier in regards to that the the idea of just going to church, and that's which is what you thought you were supposed to do, and you were faithful in doing that. Is is there a difference between being called to be a priest or being called to just sit in the church, or is everybody sitting in the church supposed to have that relationship? I, and and I, I I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I have a suspicion in my mind as to that question, but. Well, I will default to what the scriptures say. All right. <laughs> the scripture says that God is the only righteous judge. Absolutely. So on that issue, I would like to leave it for God to judge. Amen. Yeah. However, I want to say something that's really important to me, <laughs> and I believe to God. For all those 40 years I was going to church and didn't know Jesus, I didn't realize that I wasn't supposed to be going to church, I was supposed to be taking Jesus with me, be in the church, seeking the kingdom first. Amen. And that's a whole different <laughs> attitude. <laughs> you are, you, he, boy, you, you have it right there. You nailed it right there. The scripture in Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, have the same attitude of Christ. It's the attitude makes all the difference as to what the outworking and actions are going to be of a person. So we have to get beyond the concept. I thought just going to church satisfied God. I thought that's all I had to do. Yeah. And I was raised on the Ten Commandments, so I tried to keep the Ten Commandments. But as you know, nobody can keep the Ten Commandments. Yeah. However, the law brings us to Christ. So that all that was not a waste. God took all of that and brought me to Christ. Right. So the whole thing, my passion was and still is because I didn't know Jesus. Once God taught me a lot more about Jesus, I wanted to share it with all the people who had been like I was so that they would have a better opportunity to get to know him before they become 40 years old. And that's why the book was written, Dr. Z, because when we were sitting in the pew, we were not. We, we weren't doing what we're each responsible to do. Our relationship with Jesus is not the pastor's full responsibility. 
That was Moses's relationship with God and the nation of Israel pre Jesus Christ dying on the cross and delivering to us through his ascension to God, the Holy Spirit to yes. live inside of each of us. Yes. So remember the scripture where God told, Mo- remember when Moses was saying to God, your people are driving me crazy. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but they're sitting here complaining about wanting to eat the food and the cucumbers and all of this that was in Egypt. And we're over here trying to get into Canaan. I'm basically Moses is like, you need to do something, Father God, because I'm I'm through. And Father God was like, you know what? I'm going to assemble some elders to help take the burden of my, you know, complaining people off of you. And I'm going to take some of the spirit, Moses, that I have given you to to do this assignment. I'm going to take some of that spirit from you and make it available for these other co-workers to assist you with these complaining people of mine. Okay. The key is the spirit. Moses talked directly to God by God's spirit, by a willing heart in Moses who was surrendered to listen, believe, and obey God to the ability that God had given him to do so. So now that Jesus has come and gone, we all, not just one person, not just the leader in the church, everyone in the pew who accepts Jesus and confesses him as Lord of our lives, we now can talk directly to God and not just the leader of the church. So hence, in us talking directly to God, he has a personal ministry for each of Jesus's followers, not just the ordained pastor, not just the Moses figure, but for each of Jesus's followers. And when we understand that the whole reason Jesus died on the cross and paid the penalty for our sins was to restore that relationship with God that Adam and Eve lost when they sinned in the garden, of God walking intimately with them, when we understand that concept, then we realize what a precious jewel and benefit we have in Christ to be able to commune with God, to be able to talk to him directly directly, and not have to go through a Moses or anyone else, to be able to pray directly to him. I mean, that's so precious. And that's the whole point why Jesus They uh, suffered the way he did, not only on the cross, but even in coming to earth as God to come in the form of a baby that couldn't even, you know, change his own diaper. That was serious humility. But but for him to be willing to do all of that for us so we could be restored to God was tremendous and is tremendous love. And that is what I believe most people who call themselves Christians need to understand. Because in understanding that, you have a different attitude from that point that I had of just going to church thinking that was it to make me right with God. And putting all of our accountability and responsibility in our relationship with God on the ordained minister. We each are called to accept accountability and responsibility for each of our relationships with God. The ordained minister is a servant of the Lord to corral as many of us home to the kingdom as God you know, is anointing by the power of the Holy Spirit through the preaching of the gospel. But then once we receive that preaching, then each of us has a call to do the very same thing the ordained minister is doing, but we don't have to be an ordained minister. We are a minister through the ordination of the receipt 
of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Dr. Z, I've got to read you this one thing. It's very important from the book. And it ties back to the questions that you were asking me about business, conducting business in a world uh, such as the one we live in and giving the testimony for Christ within that world. We have a chapter in the book that's chapter 13. It's called In Christ, Everyone is a Priest, Regardless of Earthly Occupation, Regardless of Earthly Occupation. So I just want to read this one piece. Jesus has assured that all of his followers will receive all of him, including his love, full support, and provisions for doing his spiritual and earthly work according to his will, as led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 13, 21. Jesus wanted to board Peter's boat to help provide for Peter with the supernatural power of God. That's what Jesus wanted to do for Peter. He wanted to do this in a way far greater than Peter could provide for himself and far faster than Peter could do himself in, in getting catching the fish. Jesus wanted to help. It was time for Peter's life and lifestyle to change for the better. And Jesus was available for this change. Jesus teaches all of his followers how to make a living and reap provisions from his kingdom when he showed his future rock, Simon Peter, how to prosper in this life through the pure motive of loving God first by seeking first God's kingdom as led and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So that whole scripture about Jesus getting in that boat with Peter, they couldn't catch any fish for livelihood. Peter couldn't catch anything. But once Jesus got in the boat, all of a sudden, Peter had provisions. All of a sudden, Peter had provisions. Now, what did Jesus get in the boat to do? Jesus got in the boat to declare God's message of salvation. So in Jesus putting God's work first, God responded through Jesus by producing natural provisions, natural fish to meet Peter's natural needs. That's the whole pattern. That's the whole message of the gospel. God is saying, live for me, join me, get on board with what I'm doing. In you getting on board with what I'm doing first, then I will testify by providing you with what you need to live on this earth. And that's something that's not really delved into in many churches. I've been to many. And when it comes to the purpose of natural work. Yes, it was a curse in Genesis. Yes, when the fall occurred, all of that loving, blissful time with God, now now we have to work. But when Jesus came, he showed us the balance between seeking you first, Matthew 6, 33. But if you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, his will for your life, on a daily basis, all these things will be added to you. Peter now has fish. He can pay his bills <laughs> no, because, right? because he let Jesus get in his boat, the very boat that Jesus gave them anyway. <laughs> that is beautiful. Well, let me... Uh... Uh, can you tell us? Can you tell our listeners how do how do they get a copy of this book, and how do they get in contact with you, uh, you and Madeline, uh, for additional conversations? 
Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, currently the book is being sold on Amazon.com. So you just go to Amazon.com and you type in the title, Christians, God says you are priests. And it'll come up. First Peter 2 9. A first Peter 2 9. And it'll come up uh, for purchase. And in terms of contacting us for additional information. At the back of the book, I have my email address, so they can contact me directly. It's a long email address, but I'll say it. It's Marcus Jackson at Caliber Enterprises onecom So that's probably the best way to reach me. That's fantastic. Well, Marcus and Madeline, it's been a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. And uh, I just want to encourage all of our listeners this this idea that they were speaking of the term ecclesia or the church as it was originally used uh, referred to the believers when they would gather together to worship it didn't refer to a building or a denomination or a, you know something that we would identify as the church today you're driving down the street oh there's the church no <laughs> the church was wherever the believers gathered amen that was the church uh, and so uh, what we're uh, having church here, Doctor Z. Exactly, and so the so what we're two or more gathered in my name, the Lord is with us. Amen. And, and so the 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 what what the Madeline and and Marcus are talking about in this book is in fact how we are supposed to be living. I mean, this is uh, you know the, I encourage my listeners to get copy of this book and check out what what they have to say because it it sounds like a great read and a great. A resource for our uh, believers out there who are looking for that intimacy uh, with with the Lord. And Dr. Z, can I just say this? You had mentioned earlier that it's a study guide. It is from the standpoint that the book has an abundance of scripture sightings so that every concept of truth that the Holy Spirit is speaking about in this book is backed up by the scripture. So it's important to look up the scriptures if you're led so that you can understand or delve deeper in your individual relationship with God to hear what he's saying specifically to you. And in addition, we were also hoping that groups would get together and study the book as a Bible study because there are questions in there, very uh, Personal. uh, personal questions to help each individual evaluate their own personal relation, intimate relationship with God. And to grow in that relationship and to grow closer to the Lord personally. God, God blesses those who are doing exactly what you're doing, which is to further his kingdom work. And uh, my, my prayer for you is that this, this book is a blessing uh, for Madeline and, and for you, Marcus, from a perspective of that you will see fruit from this, from this endeavor that you've that you've uh, uh, sacrificed part of your life to write, I mean, it, 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 books don't just happen, <laughs> you know. They, Amen. That's they, that's the truth. They, they have to be written, and then the publishing. There's a whole other thing of, of getting it published. So, I bless you, my brothers and my brother and sister, for the work that you've done. I, I pray again that my listeners get a copy of it and uh, read it and and apply the the truths of Scripture in their own lives. That we, that we could all just simply believe God and follow Jesus. Thank Amen. you again, Marcus and Madeline. Y'all have yourselves a blessed day. And, uh, and uh, thank you again for being on the show. And thank you for having us. Thank you, Dr. Z. We greatly appreciate it. And by the way, um, we can post this on our social media so all of the unbelievers can hear more about yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you. We hope this episode of Way of the Bible has you feeling inspired and empowered to simply believe God and follow Jesus. Remember to search the scriptures to confirm what you've heard today. And join us next episode as we continue to discover together the treasures of wisdom and knowledge hidden in Christ and be transformed daily by the renewing of your mind. Knowing God's will for you is a life filled with joy, prayer, and thanksgiving. Be blessed.